Hello. Your Comedy Minute. I'm Scotty T. I have an absolutely amazing, amazing woman with me today. Stacy Prussman is here. Stacy, thank you so much for coming on the show. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited I, I to be here. I can't tell you how excited I am. Um, I'm even more excited. It's, we've been going back and forth on Instagram and <laughs> and it's been a while. So It's um, no way to start by lying for shit's sake. Don't do that. No, we have been going back and forth. For we have stuff. been. We have been. I called you one time and I acted like Saul Rosenberg. Do you remember that? <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm trying to just play with my, I have so much life on me. So I feel like. Oh, uh, you look great. You look like a million damn dollars. All right, let's so, start. I got comedian, actress, public speaker, radio and TV host. And that's just the tip of the iceberg. Well, I appreciate this. <laughs> well, yeah, I, I do quite a lot of things. I, I told you that I actually laid awake because there's so much stuff to cover. And I was trying to figure out how to start. So I'm going to start with this. Okay. You were on the Howard Stern show. Yeah. There's a video on YouTube of you on the Howard Stern show. Mm -hmm. And I won't get into details, but the reason that I started there is because it segues into Artie Lang. Mm -hmm. But before in the interim... Jackie the Joke Man, Martling. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I have a couple Jackie the Joke Man, Martling joke books. The only dirty joke book you need. <laughs> and I wonder, <laughs> no, I'm serious. Look, I, I love Jackie. a good place to start so I could, you know, talk about first off, what was it like, you know, to get on the Howard Stern show? You were on a couple times, right? Yeah, I think I was on about three times, four times, maybe. Okay. Um, probably in the early 2000s. Right. Uh, 90s, I think it started. Um, well, the reason why I got on was because I was in a show called Grandma Sylvie's Funeral in the 90s. Okay. And Steve Grillo, a.k.a. Gorilla, um, was one of the uh, the cast members of the show. And so... Um, I just became friends with everybody. Like, I knew Benji before he was even on the show, like, right. and so just through social circles. And so basically what ends up happening was, um, you know, after the show, I just being connected, meaning Jack, I met everybody back then, you know, uh, starting John, Jackie, and you know, now yeah. everyone's, you know, just- Well, the, and I kind of messed it up, but I, I was intrigued because if I'm right now, I could be wrong, but- Artie Lang took over after Jackie left. Is that mm -hmm. right? Yeah, Artie Lang. Yeah, I didn't really and, know Artie that well then. Yeah, and that's but, what, you know, then you went on to do, I should, I'm sorry, go ahead. Tell tell the people. You no, know. no, but basically, yeah, and that's how I got on the show, show, you know, on Howard. And um, they would call me, like, last minute to do bits that they right. could see that they wrote or they had to fill in time or whatever it might have been. They were just usually, right. uh, I did Guess the Porn Star, I did, I was, I did, um, Dr. Orgasmo, th those yeah, clips online. I, I did all that one. We called in a couple of times. Uh, we are they did PR for our show through Howard Stern. So that was Grandma Sylvia's funeral off Broadway in the 90s. So basically, it just was like this, you know, just the, the and I became friends with everybody over the years, socially right. and you know, professionally. So yeah, and you had your own show at one point, yeah. This the Pressman Hour, uh, Bob Levy and I did a a terrestrial radio show speaking of Artie um so basically Artie had a show on these two stations that from his direct tv show the audio of his direct tv show was broadcasted through th these two radio stations right one in dc and one in in boston right and when they canceled the direct tv show uh basically what happened was I guess they gave Bob the spot, you know, the, the radio right. spot. So I co-hosted with Bob and it was called the Ear, ears wide open. And we did yeah. that for a few months. It was, that well, was pretty fun. And I'm just going to keep rolling. You're starting a new podcast called the Pressman universe podcast. Do you want to talk about yes. that? That is going to be um, everything. And I'm interested in like from uh, it could be something like a, metaphysical person to a comedian to a, a strange profession to yeah. something I want to talk about it's basically going to be a very eclectic podcast it's not going to be the basic comedy 
podcast where we just roast each yeah, other. Like my little dog, <laughs> like my little dog, Tony Act. But yes, yeah, it's going to be a, a, a podcast about sort of, prob- yeah, a no, podcast like my little about dog and Bernie Act. Yeah. No, so, I'm yeah. sure it's going to be. I'm sure it's going to be fantastic, but I'm kind of surprised at how well this is. The stuff I wrote down and going right. You ran. You're doing great. Me. Thank you. You, <laughs> you know for- me better than I know myself. So. Well, I, I I like to pay respect, especially with someone of your caliber that's been doing it so long and done so many things, which leads me into you ran for mayor of New York City at one point. Yes, in 2021, I decided I wanted to run for mayor of New York City. I, and... I think that's great, Stacey. I, I think that's fantastic. And I'm not I'm Thank not just saying that. I mean it sincerely. Thank you. I, I didn't know uh, people like, why did you run? Ironically... In like 2015 or 16, when I was doing radio with Bob Levy, um, I said I wanted to run for mayor. And it, it was sort of a mini bit, I guess. This was like, you know, right. almost six years before I even did it. Right. And then I think what happened was I met a gentleman named Larry Sharp, who ran for governor um, for the Libertarian Party. And I'm like, I want to run for mayor. And he just like helped me get my campaign together. He was the the executive of my campaign and we just went for it. And well, the reason, the reason it. that I mentioned that I really respect it is because so many people bitch about what's going on, but very few do anything. And for you to, you know, try, and I think you're going to continue to try the way it seems. Right. Yeah. yeah I mean, I, I, uh, I just felt I wanted to do something for New York. I, New York is yeah. my, home it's where i was wow. brought up well, yeah, yeah. Was... you won't believe what i have next born and raised in new york spent your whole life in oh. new york yeah I, i'm a brooklyn woman yeah born and raised here yeah. um and i've lived in almost all the boroughs i i love new york with all my heart and i wanted to make the city come alive again with the yeah. arts the entertainment uh make people feel safe and free of crime. Yeah. And I wanted to help the homeless, you know, and the issue, we have a huge is- mental health issue in New York City, a huge mental health issue. Yes. Uh, drug, Steve you know, Buscemi? drug addiction, Buscemi mental health. got hit last week, right? What? Steve Buscemi, is that yeah, the people get, I don't, hit? Yeah, people are getting hit. Last week. Yeah. It's between, you know, I don't know if it's all mental, it's drugs, mental illness, I mean, yeah. I almost got, you know, a heroin addict almost nodded off right on me in the middle of a street yeah. in the nicest area of the city. Well, I mean, I just, addiction is a problem and it's not being dealt with. Our mayor now isn't dealing with a lot of our issues. He talks a big game and does nothing. And yeah. I say that with all due respect, but he doesn't. No, I, I, and I feel like it is a big problem to solve, but we need to solve it. And so I want, I ran for mayor and it wasn't even as bad during the time, you know, it got worse. So, I mean, it's almost like I didn't want to inherit that, you know, it's almost sometimes I look at the city, I'm like, wow, I would have inherited all this. Yeah. And well, I, I you don't I know, you don't know this, but I actually, you know, I worked in the music business and I've been to New York city many times and it's a magical place when you get off the train there, union station or whatever. I went to see uh, Whitney Houston at Madison square garden and just oh, wow. not only just, you know, because I work, you know, with, you know, different artists and to be there and see all the stars and, and just it's a magical place. And you're right. It's gotten I didn't like that anymore. <laughs> no, I mean, they're part. I can't say that the whole city is just a disgusting. No, no. And I don't mean I didn't mean to, to come off the wrong. No, 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 no. A lot of people, I, there, you know, if you know New York and you know where to go it's it's not yeah. i mean it's it's not it's still magical there are parts that are just magical yeah. and you know you, you have to find them it's not that they don't hit you in the face like they used to i think that's really the <laughs> issue it, no pun intended I, I, they it's, 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 boy, boy there hey it's about time we do some comedy and that's a nice segue right there i know i, I right you know it's funny because i, I have to turn the Steve comedy you, part off hit you, hit you in the face um when you started doing stand up, was was there a catalyst that that when you start and and I'm guessing did stand up come first before all this other stuff? No, I was an I was an actress since I'm like okay. a kid. 
Okay. So I'm a professional SAG after. I'm uh, sorry. I, I, I didn't know. Yeah, I'm an actress. I've been doing a lot of acting lately. Um, So I, I started out as an actress okay. as a kid, uh, theater. And and um, I was in an off-Broadway show for four years in New York City. Okay. Uh, I also did it on the road. I did uh, fi film, you know, a couple of films. Okay. And I'm doing a lot of film work now, commercials, all that stuff. Okay. And I didn't start comedy until my very, very late 20s actually okay um right. maybe even 30 i think at that point and well, um good i was just gonna ask if there was a catalyst for why yeah there was a cat there was two catalysts so ironically when i was doing grandma sylvia's funeral i made friends with jackie mason and he put the bomb wow. into my head yeah he would come to see us in the show see me in the show and i see his show he was doing one of his broadway shows at the time and he's like why you why don't you open up for me ironically great I'm really impression close with friendly with Sheba when I see our Sheba Mason, but uh, he used to talk like this. And, you know, we were friends. He was friends <laughs> That's of the a show. great impression. He was a nice, Mike, yeah. Mike, he, Mike Parenti he, was on the show. Do you know Mike? That sounds familiar. Probably Mike used to manage Jackie Mason. He went on a long tear about how much money he lost trying to promote Jackie Mason's like last tour or something. Yeah, he was, I don't know. I hadn't seen Jackie in like 15, 20 years by the time. Right, he died, passed away. Yeah, no, but I know. um, he had he and Carl, he's like, Why don't you open up for me? And I'm like, What do you mean, open up for you? You know, I think he meant a different way, but <laughs> <laughs> you know, Jackie's reputation, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. but yeah, I mean, he op I didn't, I didn't do it at that point either, right. open up for him, open up for him, but I did, I did uh get the bug in my head, and then about when the, when the show closed and after 9 11, I um. My one of my closest friends, Rick Shapiro, was a great comedian. Okay. I don't know if you guys know him. He I'll he mention, uh, I'll mention you. I used to watch him at the side the sidewalk cafe in Manhattan on Second Avenue, which is no longer there, but we'd watch him and my friend was friends with him and I was like, Wow, that guy's brilliant. I want I wish I wanna do that because his comedy was so different. It wasn't sticky, it wasn't it was so real yeah. and raw and honest and right. and free flowing. And I was just, and he would talk about anything and everything. And he was so honest. And, and also like you talk about the darkest stuff and, and, and the most interesting things. And it wasn't the comedy of, you know, the old time, it was like a different type of comedy yeah. at the time. And so Rick and I became friends and then he kind of encouraged me uh, and helped me a little bit with like writing and taught me how to write and how to get a thought and all that. And then we just, mm -hmm. I started doing stand up like very soon after that. Well, so that's, I, I, those are my influences at the well, time. And I'll tell you what, it's amazing how this is somehow, God, I don't know how, but you just posted on YouTube, I think it was yesterday, a nine minute set. And I got to tell you, that was nine minutes. You were so tight. It was so professional. You. you went from, and, and I mean, I just, I, I can't tell you how great that was. Well, thank you. I deep. I don't like posting a lot of sets online because I'm, you know, I'm like, oh, oh. But I, 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 I appreciate that. That was just a Valentine's Day show. I did. That was just. It was amazingly tight because, and I think the whole thing was for me. And I love comedy. I've met a lot of great comedians and and been fortunate to, you know, just be around a lot of big stars and stuff in my life. And to watch you, you had such command of the stage. And for nine minutes, you just railed. And if you want, uh, it, it, do you want to do a little bit? Because there was some stuff in there that I. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, I mean, I don't really, like, I don't like doing stand up. I'm like, no, okay. Like, All right. No problem, out, no. I, I could do a back and forth. Like... No, no. Well, that's, I, I wrote down a couple of things, but I, I just, um, whew, there was a lot. I, I, I don't know if it was from that one, but here's one that, that jumped out at me. Your dad was a combination of Archie Bunker and Tony Soprano. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but how tough can you be when you have a mullet and a yarmulke? He was, uh, my dad was a tough guy. He would say anything, literally anywhere. Yeah. Like he was like one of those old time jokey guys. Like he would say something, the family would be over. He'd be like, uh, Stacy, I prevented a rape the other day. And then he'd be like, I changed my mind. I mean, that was my father. Like, he was a hacky <laughs> old comic. He was That's totally great. like, 
you know, offensive before, you know, people got, you know, he, my dad would have been, can I mean, he died a few years ago, but he, if he was a comedian, he would have been canceled in this culture. So well, I, I grew up on, <laughs> I'm, oh, I'm not canceled at this point, but. Oh, Jesus, listen there, eat it there, but I was in the Bible. <laughs> Abel took him his back. Oh, that's his good. Abel took him his back from his brother with a cane. <laughs> Feinstein, <laughs> Feinberg, I know that tribe. <laughs> yeah, Archie that's good. Bunker, man. That's great. I, I my dad that. loved it. We watched it at home. Yeah, um, you I know, grew up with growing. It. We just actually was watching. We were watching Rob Reiner today. Uh, yeah. in an interview. But yeah, I mean, I think with the with the woke culture, um, you know, it just it's it's hard to be a comedian. Like, right? Like I said something on, on that set. Like, there's a lot of Asians here because it was an all Asian yeah. crowd or an eighty yeah. percent Asian. It was a very ethnic crowd, which is great. Yeah, and they laughed. Like, no one was offended. Like. They all were having fun, you know. I was I didn't say anything mean, you know. Now no, you no. say one word, it's like, oh, she's a racist or she's a bitch or she's, yeah. you know, it's I, it's not fun anymore. It's certain. I, I, I'll you tell know. you, and I've only been doing it. I got fired from my job. Not that you care, but I got fired from my job. I'm sorry. No, 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 for <laughs> telling jokes. And really? I started, yeah, and I started doing your comedy minute, and and you may not believe this, but this is true. I did a joke last week. I do I do joke reels on Sunday. I take all my little quickies and I do a joke reel. Oh, and I cool. threw it together and there was a Mexican joke in there. And it was just a joke. Believe it or not, somebody told me that I should kill myself. I'm a racist, maggot, Trump, asshole, prick. And you should just kill yourself, you effing idiot. I'm not oh, lying to you. Oh my God, you. that's terrible. Yeah. I'm not lying to you. Well, people don't like me. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> you know, people have, assume like one thing, you know, it's like I have trolls. Just... My trolls are incredible. <laughs> <laughs> my trolls. It's a wonder I have a deep six myself, Stacy. The stuff you know they what? say to me. The, the more the more haters you have, the more views you have. That's what they say now. I mean you know, oh, a lot of man. people. I mean, who, I don't want the time to troll anybody. Really, it still like, hurts, really. though. I mean, you know, and what I don't understand, Stacy, it's so easy to just scroll. It's so easy to to, but instead they want to stop. And with me, what they do, Stacy, they will watch, and then they'll watch another one, and then they'll watch another one, and they'll on each one tell me how bad I suck. <laughs> well, you know what? At least you're putting your stuff out there, and that's very brave because. <laughs> You know, people, have, so, you know, I, you read, if you read anyone, like some of the top comics and their comments, they get trolled. So it's like, yeah, I don't you know, I, you're putting yourself out there. It's great. Like, so don't, so, so fuck I the don't, trolls. I don't. Look in there real You know close. what? Let them do something. Like, let them, yeah. oh, no, you know, I don't. let them get off the computer and do their own stand up, <laughs> like, and let them try to do what you do. And then we'll see. We'll hey, talk. Look, look in there real close, Stacey. Look, look real close. Do you see mm -hmm. that look of concern in my eye? I, no. <laughs> Did you see it? <laughs> yeah. It's like, no, it's not concerned. It's just that it angers me that the people that actually put themselves out there, they try to do their art, they, they're doing whatever they do. And then these people that do nothing all day, but troll are trolling you. And, and you know, it's like, because, it's just, and who knows believe... if it's even an AI bot, right? Like nowadays, it may not even be a human being. It might just be an AI bot. Because I believe in total transparency. I'm mm -hmm. going to be 62 in August. Oh, wow. You don't even look a day near. Hey, look, and I have hair. A lot of people wonder if I have hair. I thought I'd show you because you do a lot of hair stuff. I do well, hair modeling, too. You know yeah, I was that. just that. You know, there you go. Boy, <laughs> I have a weird, you, you I have a weird think, You would think that I actually prepared for this damn thing. I do hair modeling. If anyone wants I to I know you me, do. It's easy. Hire me. It's fun. I guess it's You're like, hotter than fun. a fireman's sweatband. Oh, stop. I'm, I'm, a, I'm, an old, I'm an old lady now, but oh, thank you. Oh, stop it. I'm old. I'm 60. I'm going to be 62 in August. You know what, though? It's It's all about what's up here and how you feel and how you live your life. Yeah, no, I'm happy. I do my, uh, you know, I'm going to be doing a, I'm yeah. working on a TV show uh, this week, a, a major yeah, TV let's show. Let's move on to the, what you have coming up because you. Um, I can't really talk up. about the TV show I'm working on because it's just one of it's. It's basically I'm playing a, a a good friend of a main actress, and then I'm going on the road on uh, Friday. I'll be at Tiff's. Right. I don't have the address in my Tiff's Comedy yeah, Club. But... I'll be headlining that show, and then I'm doing a. A uh, women's event in Binghamton, I think a women's convention uh, for women. <laughs> you got a show. You got a show at Rodney's in July coming up. 
I have a front show in Rodney. I'll be booking more. And then in, in Southampton, I'm, I'm working with, I'm opening for my friend, Vanessa. She's my best friend. So I'm opening for her. Yeah. I'm going to hop on that show with her. Well, let's see um, if we get Vanessa on this little dog and pony. Yeah, Vanessa, we'll get, yeah, Vanessa's, um, she, she does a lot of um, road work and she's on the boat. She was on Women of a Certain Age. Shout out to yeah. Vanessa Hollingshead, one of my favorites. Yeah. Best friend. Love her. Great comedian. Yeah, Talented as fuck. Uh, <laughs> so she um uh she's gonna oh, uh, we'll get her on yeah we're gonna i think in july i have to get the date july 20 something that weekend we're gonna be in southampton at six and stones comedy club uh but friday come out to tiff's this week which i think is the eighth um and the and then rodney's in july and uh get my hot sauce <laughs> oh, yeah 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 i forgot to mention that yeah get it right get so they can see it. Yeah, it's I, a mayor you know of fun town. It's spicy and sweet and all those things in between. Big and good, hot and spicy, sweet and meaty. Well, yeah, Stacey, hot. I want to make sure that we cover everything. Yeah, sure. We, I want to yeah, make sure I didn't miss anything. Like I said, I, I we have plenty down. of time. We have about, I think at least, I, I I got this new camera and light. I'm trying to like get the setup. I'm at my boyfriend's house, and so I had to find the right the it's, right angle. It, listen, uh, stop, stop. And he was walking around naked. I'm like. Honey, you got to put your clothes hey, back hey, on. Hey, everything's great. Everything's great. I just want to make sure that we cover everything and that we get to my favorite part of the show, your comedy minute. Oh, shit. Okay. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> my here's comedy where, minute. Here's where the real comedy comes, kids. My comedy minute. Yeah, buddy. Here's, here's, where, comedy where the, minute. here's where the real... This is... Uh, Everyone tells me what a great concept it is. And then when I come down to brass tacks, they go, what, 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 am, I, what am I supposed to do? <laughs> what do you want to, I mean, just, is, is it a question? Do I do stand up? Do you want me to tell you about yeah, the best, com it, the worst, it, do you want to hear the worst comedy <laughs> moment I've ever had? <laughs> the literally the worst show I ever had in my life. <laughs> that is, that's good. Um, well, it's not that funny. One. So basically this was like a show that was like, I was like, I needed like to make money bad. Right. Like I was like, bitch, I'm broke. I gotta get my hair done. So this is like, <laughs> I was, this is like 10 years, maybe 12 years ago. I was, right. I, and I also ironically was going to like a baby shower for my best friend. So it must've been like 14 years ago because of the, the kid turned 14 recently. And um, it was in Philadelphia and the show was in Philadelphia. And my one comedy friend pawned this show off my ex-husband pulling the show off, but I'm like, all right, you pull the show off. You have to drive me. So, <laughs> and so um, basically what happened was it was a 10 year old birthday party. Why they hired, or even when, yeah, it was, maybe it was even younger. It was eight or 10. It was like between ages eight and 10. Okay. They said, we're going to hire a stand up comedian. I mean, you know, I mean, I'm not exactly a clown, you know, I'm, a, I'm not a kid's comic. I'm like a dirty club comic. I mean, I can do clean yeah. stuff. You can hire me for a clean show, but I'm not, you know, basically. So I get there and they're like, okay, you know, you know, stand there. She's always in like a living room. It's a giant house in Philadelphia. And so, you know, basically they wanted a babysitter. Well, so I get like a microphone, like, hey, everybody, you know, making, trying to make jokes. I don't know what to do. We play improv game. The kids are just screaming, bah, 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 like on the top of their lungs. Like I have a tape of it on my Facebook somewhere, just screaming and screaming. Like they weren't paying attention. It was like I was a teacher at a school, you know, at a school. It was like the worst. I mean, I wanted to, I, I wanted to like, like literally drink a whole bottle of wine and never wake up after that. That was one of the worst shows I've ever done. Like, okay. I mean, like I could deal with like people heckling me. I can deal with like people hating me walking out, but right. those kids scarred me for life. <laughs> so comedians don't ever take a kid's show like that. Unless you're like a magician or a clown or you do balloon tricks or you, I don't know. Yeah. WC but, field said that don't work with kids and, don't um, work don't work for kids and nowadays they're so you know presumptuous because i've i've done some <laughs> teaching you know in the schools i've done like acting and it's like all right um, but so that was the worst comedy I, so i can tell you some of the best comedy moments if you want to hear well, that. it it doesn't matter so it, being on the way, way by the way your comedy minute is at least and maybe that's where the, the hang-up is for me it's something that you think back on 
a crazy story, your girlfriend fell, or you know what I mean? There's something that you think back when it's hit. Oh my God, I'll never forget that. Well, you know, it's it's funny because um, when I used to do the Artie Lang podcast, which right. I mean, it was every Thursday and it was like, I remember coming home from his show and he would make me laugh so hard. Like my, my right. rib, like my, yeah, like my, I, know, I was doing there. Pilates. Yeah. It was so, my, my stomach would be killing me. Yeah. I mean, it was belly laughter and it was just that, that, that was one of the, some of the funnest, funnest stuff. moments, you know, you but know, you said you being wanted... on stage is also just great. Yeah. I just, anytime the sh I like just being on stage. I mean, I don't have moments that okay. I remember because of all the drugs, but, um, <laughs> all the drugs. um, well, medically, you know, uh, prescribed. Oh, but, okay. Um, yeah, I, but, I had uh, a guy on, I had a guy on Stacy that ate too many mushrooms when I asked him his favorite comedy minute, he ate too many mushrooms and climbed up in his neighbor's tree. Wow. I never did that. <laughs> I mean, I've done crazy stuff in my life. Don't get me wrong, but, um, well, see, that's what I was looking for, but you're just not going to give it to me. <laughs> I, I don't, you know, I used to, I, I was, I had, um, I'm kidding you. You're fine. Tell me about your best show. You told me about your least favorite show with the kids. Tell me your, it, it was, you know, it, 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 oh, there's so mine. many. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> every, I mean, I time to, yeah, walk, every, every time I, you know, I, I walk, every time I walk on the stage. I, I, I mean, the shows when you, you know, when I, I I'll just be, a, I'll, I'll be a generalist. Quite, you know, it's like a, I feel like I'm in a job interview. Um, hey, when they ask you like your worst trait, like what would you be? I'm like, I'm not telling you my worst trait. Don't your fucking business. I don't work for you yet. <laughs> You'll find out if I get the job. You know, uh, I, I, you know, I, I just like when I do new stuff. Right. I'm the kind of person that writes on stage. Like I don't, I don't really do that many open mics. I never was great with open mics. Right. But I like to write on stage. So like if right. I'm writing on stage and I go into a rant and it yeah. just flows and it's like like it seems almost like I wrote the jokes yeah. beforehand. That to me is like a great moment. I, that's to me feels like life, yeah. like being as high as a kite. Well, that's what I think uh, touched me about the nine minute bit you just posted your, your uh, Valentine's Day show because it just flowed and you were. Boom, 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 boom. Thank, yeah, I mean, that, that takes no a real fat, I, No, I was like, like, try to cut the fat, you know? That's what yeah. I, I I was, you know, when I came up, all the, the bigger comics back in the day, I bought, you know, I worked with everybody because we would all be on the same shows, right? right? And so I was younger and newer. And one of the things that they always taught me was like, get to the joke. You know, get to the joke, yeah. get to the punchline, get the point out. Like, don't add too much shit before you're. Yeah, your and that's room, that's you know? not the com that's not the comedians today. Yeah, I mean, some they are take forever. Great well, writers. I mean, w when I say that, the younger comedians that I watch, I take some five minutes to get. You know, well, I was at the store, and then hell, by the time they get to the punchline, I'm already flipping the damn channel. No, I agree. It's, so I I think that like. Even if the joke kind of isn't as great as you think it is, just get to it. Like, you know what I'm saying? I'd rather have a little laugh than like yeah. nothing. And then well, I'll tell you what, I don't know if you noticed it. And I'm big into spontaneity. That's why we've never met. We're doing this for the first time. But when you said a minute ago about what's your worst trait, and you went on a little rant, that uh, you saw me laugh because what <laughs> happens for me is then four jokes go in my head of, you know, What's your worst trait? <laughs> Fuck you. Hey, here. Hey, Doc, I'm having a problem making friends, you fucking cocksucker. What do you think the problem is? <laughs> I mean, it's it's weird. I mean, it's like I'm sorry. the worst I, trait is that I don't show up for work on time and I work the least possible before the job and that I'm just here for the money so I can do my stand-up on the weekends and oh, at, God at night you. when I... You know, that's God my worst you. trait. So I'm I can't wait to start here at this horrible corporation to do your stupid <laughs> fucking administrative assistant <laughs> bullshit. Because I can't type either. So, you know, good luck. God, Stacy, you are hilarious. Well, thank you. You are I'm hilarious. I, so. I, I can't tell you how much fun I've had. I'm having fun too. This is great. I mean, really? I just, I bought this new camera uh okay to, to use. For this and, a podcast, and, and so you I bought it just, just 
just for just your for you. I video. got it just for you because I'm sick of this <laughs> horrible computer made a terrible camera. So. You and that goddamn lion. I can't put up with that lion of yours. No, I did. I just bought a camera and I was I know, it up I hours. know, but you didn't buy it for me. Don't try it. I did buy it for you. I'm like, I'm doing a podcast. I want to make it look well. I want to make it look good. I, and I want to, you, you know, look, be professional. You look like a million damn dollars. Oh, they, no, the camera here is all grainy. I, like they, I don't know who made this tomorrow. shitty computer, but you get better yeah, so I wanted to day. get a nice camera for you. Well, <laughs> Well, look, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to stop the recording so we can talk for a minute or two off the air. Oh, sure. Okay. You That's made great. you made my day because, uh, you know, I'm new at doing this. I, I did tell you I got fired for telling jokes. I started your comedy minute four and a half years ago. It's evolved mm -hmm. to now where I'm having people on because I think I'm best with one other person and bouncing stuff off. And, and you know, and I also love the dynamic of a man and a woman because, just that's amazing stuff. Yeah, I think it's to great. Me. I really like that dynamic. So, and I'm so grateful that you came on the show, but I want to stop the recording so we can talk a minute or two off the air. And if you really did have a good time, you'll come back and see me again. Yeah, I will definitely see you again. Yeah. Okay, cool. Let me stop the recording. I want to make sure that we get a chance to talk a little off the air. Okay, great.